If you just clicked on a video about getting a good white balance, you're probably like me in the way that you want your color to be really, really good. And what can be frustrating about it is that so many things affect how your color appears to you and to other people. You know, it could be the time of day, it could be whether your screen's calibrated, it could be the way you shot it. There, there's a lot of things in the chain there that affect it. So I wanted to devise a method that I could use that would help me get good color scientifically, that no matter what my eye is seeing, I know that that color balance, that white balance is completely neutral. Now this is a little nerdy and it's a little involved, but I think that once you lock this technique down, you're gonna really like it. I'm gonna edit here in Capture One, and I know not everybody watching this uses Capture One, and that's okay. I'm not using any tools that are specific to Capture One as an editor. It's just what I happen to use. Now, let's dig into it, and I'll show you kind of the nerdy thing that I do to get good color. All right, so here we are in Capture One, and right off the bat, if you're a Capture One user or you've used it before, you might notice that my screen looks a little weird. It's laid out strangely. Well, I came over from Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, and one of the things that um, Capture One has done, which I think is really cool, is they've created a workspace for people migrating to Capture One, and uh, it's called Migration Mode. So if you go to Window, Workspace, and Migration, it will move all the tools around so that it looks a little bit more like you're used to as a Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw user. Now, the other thing I really like about Capture One is that all of these adjustment tools over here that you can change, you know, they got all the regular ones, exposure, et cetera, levels, curves. You can actually take any of these tools and bring them out and move them around. And one of the things I do to speed up my workflow is I have the tools arranged in the way that I work. I go by item by item in the way that I actually edit images. So I just go from the top to the bottom and it makes my workflow quite a lot faster. So speaking of that workflow, the first thing that I usually do is make sure that I have the camera profile set correctly. Now, if you've never done this or thought about this, that's fine. This is just a little insight into how I do it. One of the things I love about Capture One is that the profiles for raw images are really, really good. It's just how it interprets what that raw image looks like. And every software has an engine that does this. You can buy custom ones, you can make your own custom ones, but the ones built into Capture One, the generic ones, are pretty good. Depending on the camera you have, you might also see in Capture One a pro standard profile. And so it'll automatically detect your camera and apply the generic profile. But in this case, I have a pro standard one available. Again, this is built into Capture One. And so I will go to the pro standard and generic. And if you just look at the skin tones, you'll see they're a little warmer, a little nicer dynamic range, or just something about pro standard that I like a little better. If you don't notice a difference, that's fine. It's better, trust me, <laughs> and we're moving on. The other thing that you can do is select the curve of the image, essentially the contrast level. And so we have a film extra shadow, which is gonna be lower contrast, film high contrast, self-explanatory, and then film standard, which is somewhere in the middle. It's the porridge that's just right. So that's what we're gonna use here today is film standard. I'm gonna close that up. We never have to look at base characteristics again. Now, the next thing I'll do is lens correction. Again, Capture One will detect my lens and it will make the magical adjustments for that lens. But one of the things I like to do is to uh, adjust the light fall off, which essentially reduces vignetting on the lens a little bit to about 25 points or so, and I close that. Now, so that I don't have to do this every time for every image, because I do make those every time on every image, is I create a preset, or in Capture One is called a style, that applies just those things. So when I import images, you can apply a preset or a style and all those images will already have those things applied to them. So I never have to use those. They're already done by the time I've imported the image. I just thought it was important for the purposes of this video to show how I have that set up in case you want to follow along. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the histogram tool. Now, if you've been in photography at a length of time, you know what a histogram is. I like dragging the histogram out here on the image and making it big so that I can see what I'm doing and make some adjustments and do some real fine tuning. And you said, well, okay, that's dumb, but why do you do that? Well, it's actually pretty cool. Um, this is nerdy, so you know, if you're not into the nerdy stuff, then you can you know, go, but that's fine, I forgive you, it's totally cool. The thing about the Capture One histogram is by default, it's in this RGB overlay mode. So you have red, green, and blue color channels showing over the Luma channel, which is kind of this gray blob that you see. Now, 
the way that a lot of people do a white balance when they're shooting is if you go over to the white balance tool, you'll see that customary dropper that you always use, you know, and then you find something that's white or gray or essentially supposed to be color neutral and you click on it and it will make the whole image uh, perfect. Uh, that's not true, but essentially it does help a lot um, by doing exactly this one thing. And if you didn't know how this works, this is something that I discovered that's actually pretty neat. When you find an area that's neutral, and this white wall that is gray in this image because I didn't like the wall, is essentially color neutral because it's like ultra pure white paint from Home Depot. It's, it's, there's no blue tint, there's no uh, any tint in it. It's just pretty much straight white as far as I'm aware. And so this should be color neutral. So if I use that dropper and I click on this, it should correct the white balance in this image, right? So what happens when you click on that? Watch these red, green, and blue channels it lines them up on top of each other. Just like if you were using a red, green, and blue gel that makes white light, when you line up those channels, it makes the image essentially color neutral. So let's remove that for a second and go to the next tool, which is the color balance tool. Now this gives you the ability to control these channels using color wheels. And just to show you how this works, you've got the color wheel, you can drag the center point anywhere around it. And to read this histogram, I know looking at this image that these areas, if you hover over it with that dropper tool, you'll be able to see an orange line that shows you where you are in the image, what you're hovering over, which becomes incredibly useful. Now this area that is supposed to be very neutral is very, very blue and you can tell because the blue channel is much farther to the right. So let's experiment with that and see how it works. Now I'm gonna go back to the color wheels under the color balance tool and I'm gonna drag the center all the way to the right and watch how the histogram changes. You'll see the red shoots over to the right, and that means this image clearly is very red dominant, followed by blue, then by green, right? And we definitely don't want that. That looks like crap. So when red, green, and blue are over top of each other, that area of the image should be theoretically uh, neutral. And so we have the ability using the dropper or using the color wheel adjustments over here under the color balance tool to do that manually. So for example, if I were to take this tool and I would see that blue is further forward and green is further forward and I wanna line them up, so I'm gonna drag this toward red and away from blue and green. And you're gonna to start to see these line up just like so. So you can actually do this without using the dropper tool. So that's pretty quick, pretty accurate, and it's gonna give you a really good color balance. Now, just for the sake of argument, let's see what we got here. In Capture One, you have the ability to try to look at images back to back, but if you just look at the difference in the color of the background here, you can see that the background was definitely very blue. Now, if you can't see the difference, that's okay because this system, it shows you mathematically with ones and zeros, with scientific 100% fact, that this is now color neutral because you lined up the red, green, and blue channels. So whether you're colorblind or have incredible color acuity, you know now that the gray in the background is color neutral, and you don't have to have a calibrated monitor. You don't have to have uh, you don't have to have eyeballs <laughs> that see color. You can just do this, and uh, it's going to be color accurate, which is great. But what if you don't have a neutral colored surface in the image that you can rely on, which happens a lot? Okay. What if you've just got somebody in a you know, a blue suit on a blue background and, you know, a gray shirt that whatever, like you don't necessarily have a color to rely on to be able to do this with. Well, this is where a color checker comes in. So this is the x uh color checker passport. I believe it's called a Calibrite now. I'm not really sure, but yeah, you can find these things all day long on eBay for a little bit of money. Now this makes sure that you have a definitely neutral color right where the light is gonna fall on the face of the person in the image. That's the important part, is that the skin tones look great and accurate. That's what you really, really want here. So I'm gonna take this gray, uh, both light and dark gray, and for me, this really represents people with kind of Caucasian light skin, and then people with darker skin tones, and you can sort of adjust for either of those to make the skin tone better depending on who's in the image. I think that's one of the reasons that you have two different grays in there. Um, and you can use these. So no matter what the person's skin color is or what the background is or what they're wearing or what lighting you're using or even how you shot the image, as long as you've got these, you can go right to that neutral color balance. Here's the problem. Using the dropper tool, 
you can only get neutral color on one specific tone. And I really want both of these represented by the highlight and the shadow parts of the skin. I really want both of these to be neutral to just give me this perfect neutral skin tone. So let's bring out the histogram again and I'll show you what I mean. Now you can see that represented in the image that the light gray here, if I hover over it, this is going to be up here in the top end of the midtones. And the dark gray, let me just undo that color balance real quick. Uh, -boo -boo. There we go. All right, so you can see when hovering over parts of the image, when I hover over the light gray, it's gonna be this hump far to the right and hover over that darker gray, you're gonna see it dead in the middle of the image and both of them are pretty badly out of alignment. So let's click on the light one and you'll see that they're a lot better, but this one is still kind of blue and green heavy because you can see those blue and green channels are too far to the right. But if I click on this one, it's gonna throw the other one out of alignment. And so although I have pretty close color balance to get accuracy, I need to do it a little bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the, the gray color and I'm going to go to my midtones in my color wheels under this color balance tool. And now when you affect, uh, if you look, you can actually affect the color wheels in midtones, shadows, or highlights. Now that doesn't mean that the other areas, if I like midtones, for example, are completely unaffected when I move the color wheel around. They're just affected less. Think of it like pulling a rubber band around. You can definitely affect certain areas of the color in the image but you're gonna affect everything in the image no matter which channel you select. So you do have to be gentle with this, but it does give you more precise balancing. So if I go to the midtones, and I'm gonna make those big by clicking on midtones, I notice that my, my uh, red is behind, green is next, and then blue is the most dominant. So if I drag these a little bit over towards red, red is gonna come up, and blue, sometimes it takes a little, there we go, and blue, is it takes a little practice moving this thing around, but you wanna line them up so that the peaks are roughly matching. And there they go. That's a little more accurate. But now I've thrown the top ones out a little bit. So let's make that bigger. And the beauty of this is, you'll notice I can put the histogram over the image. I don't have to look at the image to do this. I can just line these things up. So then I'm gonna go to highlights, which is gonna be a little bit closer. It's not strictly speaking highlights, but about the high end of midtones. So this will affect these light gray areas more. And I know that this needs a little bit of blue and a little less green and red. So I'm just gonna drag these here and line those up like so. And my midtones are still a little blue heavy and a little red heavy. Let's go there. Boom, okay. Bam, lined up and lined up. So now what I have there is a neutral color balance. So let's look at the before and after. You can see my skin tones are a lot cooler here and the background's blue. And once I apply this, I've got neutral gray and nice warm skin tones. So I'm gonna go back and re-add kind of those base characteristics we talked about earlier, just to make sure I've got that going on and the lens correction we talked about earlier. Once I have that locked in, all I have to do is go to the copy settings up at the top, uh, which is also, you can, there's a keyboard shortcut for it. Um, I don't know it. I have it on my stream deck over here. And you can go to the other image. Now let me remove all the previous settings from that. So we're back to how this image was out of the camera. And then I apply it. And now I've got a perfectly neutral color balance. And you might be looking at the screen thinking, Gary, that looks crazy to me. It doesn't matter what it looks like to you. It just is neutral. Because according to the red, green, blue overlay, they are just on top of each other. And so the skin tones are accurate. The background color is accurate. So whether this color is what you want to end up with, this is what it looked like when you took the picture. That's kind of crazy to think about. So it doesn't matter what your eyes are perceiving, this is pretty neutral. Now this isn't the end of the image. This is sort of the beginning of the image. This is the very first thing I do. And to make sure that I get good color through my entire sessions, no matter what backgrounds I use, no matter outfits, no matter what lighting modifiers, no matter what changes I make, I shoot this gray card in the beginning of every single look once I get it set up. Now I know that my lights in the studio are calibrated at about 5200. So I set my camera to 5200 and I rely on those lights to be mostly accurate. And then I shoot this gray card and then I adjust to the gray card. And this way, every image that I take is very, very easy to get to that neutral color balance. Now, why do you want a neutral color balance? Well, to be fair, maybe you don't have to. You can probably just 
pray and pray and do it. But if you're already watching this video, you want your color to be really good. And so the best place to start is neutral. And once you have a neutral base to work from, you can color grade and do whatever to your heart's content, always with the ability to go back to that original neutral image, because you know that you have the image perfectly white balanced, ready to go. So um, ask away. I'm sure you might have lots of questions about this technique. You're going to need to practice it. You're going to need to do it because honestly, moving those color wheels around and, and getting those things to line up takes a little bit of practice, but I promise you it's worth it. You're going to feel a lot better about the color in your images when you do. So thanks for watching the video. By the way, I have a weekly photography-ish podcast called Photobomb. I host it with my friend Boo Ray Perry. It comes out every week. And I also have an email list. I teach and I do webinars and workshops and you can be the first ones to find out about that if you want to. So there's a link to sign up um, here and here and in the description for my email list. And for signing up, you'll also get a free frequency separation action download for Photoshop, which is pretty cool. So check that out, listen to my podcast and let me know in the comments uh, what you think, uh, because I know it's nerdy, but but I like it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.